Welcome back. How you doing YouTube? Sacred Sage here and I'm back with another video. This time I'm going to talk about rendering times. So when I first started, rendering times were horrendous. I was having two, three, four hour rendering times for some of my images. Now granted I was on a lower GPU and that does make the biggest factor because iRay is a NVIDIA GPU heavy system. If you're going to go with the CPU backup, you're going to be having long render time. So you need to make sure that your memory is enough that it, uh, your GPU can hold the amount of memory needed so that you are not falling back to the CPU. But before that, if you find this video helpful, give a quick thumbs up. Consider clicking the subscribe button to help support the channel. And let's get into it. So this scene that I have going on right here, when I first got this asset, this was a very heavy, heavy rendering time asset, especially when it was viewing this bar area. So let me go into iRay and show you, show you what I was dealing with. So this is a nighttime setup for the bar. So there are plenty of lights in this scene, and that's the reason why it is so heavy on the rendering time. You can see the you can see the white. This I don't even have a background in this in this image, so there's no eye ray. So this light here coming from the lamps, then then the whole bar area, all that lights, all that is just all that is just lights being transmitted, reflected, bouncing off walls and everything else. If we go over here, let's take the bar shells. Let's let's uh oh that ain't gonna work. Let's let's go into the bar shells. So if we open this up, let's look at the TV. Mm, where you at? All right, so the lumens on the TV alone is 50,000. 50,000 lumens on the TV alone. So what these asset creators do is they put a primitive, right? So there is a primitive built in with this TV screen. And what they do is they put the cutout opacity down to 0 .001. So when they do that, you don't see the actual primitive, but you still get the light. But because it is at 0 .001, the light is so mineral that they have to jack up the lumens. So that's why 50,000 is actually kind of low. I'm pretty sure if I look around here, I will find something a lot larger. That's 50,000, that's not all that bad. I know there has to be one around here that's really, really high. Anyways, I'm straying away from the point. Anyways, so there's just tons of light coming from this image. Now you can downsize the lights, which I normally do because I, I don't like these glares, like right here, right? So in, in my actual saved asset of my nighttime scene, I got these a lot less. I think they're like 20,000, 25,000. So they're like half as much because I don't like these glares because the character models will be sitting there and all of a sudden there's this weird glare. It, just, it makes it look ugly. So that being said, if you don't want to change anything and you like the look, there are assets that you can use to make your scene better. Let me see if I can't find one. So one of them is right here, Scene Optimizer. So this thing boots up and what it does is it calculates everything in the scene, all the texture maps. So what this initially does is makes it so that the texture maps are smaller. So there's less memory on your GPU so your GPU can kick in, right? <clears throat> So you can make them smaller by two, which is actually a quarter of the size, four, which is an eighth, and so on and so forth. Now, granted, when you cut these down, they're gonna look, they're not gonna look as good. So here you have the distance, right? So with that distance, you just judge, am I do I really need this texture that high? Do I need this? I mean, look, it's 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 an 8K map. 8K. So if I use this by two, that'll cut it down to a 2K map. 2K is more than sufficient for this scene. So just keep that in mind. And then what you do is you just come down here and you just, once you got 
all the stuff that you want to minimize. So if you don't want something like, oh, I need this map at that resolution, you just click it off like this. And then after you're done, you come down here and you hit lower resolution, it'll run through the progress and then bam, you're good to go. And that's one way to minimize GPU memory. Now, another way, let's see if I have it up here in scripts. I might not, no, I do not. All right, so let me go here in all products. Let's look up Instify. So what this does, Instify is amazing. So what Instify does is anything that is a duplicate, it'll be basically turned into one. It clones it. So all these bar stills, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way around the bar. 9, 10, 11, 12. There's, I, got, I got 15 bar stools here. 15 bar stools. So each one of these is taking up memory. What Instantify does is it takes all 15 of those bar stools and slams it into one instance because there's nothing changed about it. So you come over here and utility, and this saves up a lot of space as well. Instantify, it does its thing. It thinks about it. And then once the menu pops up, it's just like, what you want to do? And you can... You can take the whatever you don't want, you don't have to instify. So just I just allow everything. It, it, it knows its work better than me. And it tells you how many of a prop you have. We got 10 ashtrays. We got 23 chairs. We got 10 light planes that are the same. And it will literally, and that's a big one right there, the light planes. Because of all that light geometry, it'll literally save all 10 of those as one. So it's just a light geometry of one than 10. That is big. Even though the polygons are less, the light geometry is going to be stellar. So let's select all and you convert it. <clears throat> and now it'll make all that stuff into instances, which gets brought up over here. Polygons reduction is 24 almost 25% less. It literally cut out 200,000 polygons just to save space on the GPU. And the more GPU memory you have, the quicker your renders are going to be. So I, like I said, I used to, when I first started rendering in this area, my renders were running around two hours if I was pointing at this bar area. They're down to about 20, 30 minutes now because of Instify, because of Scene Optimizer, and 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 whatnot. There's just there's just tons of ways to minimize it. Another thing is lighting. <clears throat> so lighting means everything. It, it it's a big factor in render time. So my favorite asset of all time, which you probably hear me say all the time in my other videos, is ghost lights. So let's go and do ghost lights. So ghost lights. Whew, man, I've, I've had some, I've actually tested this on one scene. I had no ghost lights and then I had a ghost light and it cut my 45 minute render down to, I believe it was like 18 or 20 minutes. Now this doesn't work for all scenes. None of this works for all scenes. I've done scene optimizer and literally just shaved off like maybe 10 or 15 seconds. It, it, it all depends on what you're dealing with. But then again, I've had Scene Optimizer run and it shaved off like 20 minutes. So it depends on what you're dealing with. But there's so many different factors. You can really shave off a lot of time by doing all of these ghost lights, Scene Optimizer, and Instify. Then the whole render settings. So re render settings, I used to mess around with them quite a bit. Like the the coverage ratio, That's that doesn't... But here, render quality. I used to jack this up like 1.5, sometimes 2, and what it does, it you just, right here, by making that 2, you just doubled your render time for a little bit better quality. I learned my lesson. I keep that thing at 1. And that's that's literally all I deal with. Within the, you can do some denoiser. Denoiser can save on render. I don't know a lot about denoiser, although it's probably something I should. I just haven't delved or dove into it quite yet. Uh, if you want to save off a few more seconds, you could change this from uh, dome to scene and just run off of ghost lights. If you're not facing like a window or whatnot, if you're facing a window, you probably want the light to be shown from the HDR or whatever you have background that you have coming in. So I wouldn't recommend it. But if it's just a scene, like bam, no windows, no nothing, you could do that. And then it wouldn't take the light geometry from the HDR. 
But besides that, those assets are the biggest savers. And the denoiser can help too. So what, uh, from what I understand of denoiser is when it's rendering out an image, it takes all the noise that is left over and cancels that out. I don't know how it happens or, or what have you, but like I said, I got to dig into that more. But anyways, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Those assets changed my rendering experience completely. I will say that. And if your renders are still high, it's more than likely one of two things. You, your models, because their textures are high, or your lighting. There are so many lights. Let's, let's look at these. Like, I didn't even check these LED lights. So, bam, ceiling LEDs. So, each one of these LEDs that you see up here, look at that number. How many zeros is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. That is 10 million lumen. 10 million. So, that right there is a lot of light reflection and geometry. <clears throat> so, keep that in mind. Oh, almost forgot. Another big thing. If you are not using Instantify, or you are not, because uh, you can't use Instantify on models. So let's say you have a model popped up right here, right? And you're like, well, I'm only, I'm, I only have the face. It's not showing anything else, right? You can hide the clothing. You can hide the body. And let me, let me bring up, let me just bring up a model. Let me show you guys. So let's bring up. Uh, let's bring up. Let's bring up Paige. <clears throat> we'll have Paige load in. I don't want to get hit on a YouTube thing, so as soon as this thing pops up, I'll be turning the camera until I get her dressed. Come on. T -t 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 Today, Junior. So you can hide these body parts of the model. So let's go ahead, Victoria, smart content. Let's just wardrobe, outfits. Just throw something on her. Looks good. All right, I'm not even gonna give her a hair or anything. So let's say you're taking a, a shot and it's just like her right there, and you're just taking like a shot like this. Bam. Right about right about there. You can sit here and be like, okay, well, I don't need this. Control, click, and then it hides everything down. So as you can tell, it took off the hands as well. Same thing for the legs. Click right here. And if you do control and click on it, boom, it hides all of it. So you can be like that. I'm going to hide all that, which is just saved geometry, saved polygons. The biggest polygon uh, for, for a model is definitely face, hair, and hands. There are a lot of polygons in the hands. So if a hand is not in the image, shut it off because it is a lot of polygons. I think the last time I checked on this model, each model is different. Uh, I believe this model had like, I want to say around 10,000 polygons just for a hand. So there's a lot of polygons. There's not as many in like the torso area. There might be like maybe 20, 30 in this, but the hands, there were quite a bit. So you can, you can also hide that. You can hide the pants. Whatever's not in the scene, if you hide it, it saves on GPU memory because it's just wasted memory. You don't need it. So you can just hide all this. Be like, bam, bam. It's like, I'm just showing the face anyways. Boom. And just, yep, just hide it all. Anyways, I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And I will catch you guys next time. Take care.